Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for joining me. Those who follow my channel will know that back in May, Sharpstar sent me this telescope, the Ascar 80 PHQ to review. And I've been using it for the past three months or so. So I think it's about time that I give you my full review of this telescope. Okay, so full disclosure before we get going, Sharpstar sent me this telescope, so I have spent no money on it. They said, keep it for a few months, do a review, and then send it back to them. So I don't get to keep this scope unless I end up buying it from them. One thing I wanted to make sure before I actually agreed to this was whether or not I could be impartial on this review. And they said, of course, anyone who reviews their gear gets to be completely impartial. If you don't like the telescope, let everyone know. So this is going to be a full and honest review from me. Okay, so in this video, the plan is to talk about the build quality, what comes with the telescope out of the box. Also gonna talk about the optional reducer that you can buy with this telescope. Then I'm gonna look at some of the image quality. So some of the image Images that I produced with this telescope over the last few months. I'm going to look in detail about the stars, especially in the corner of the frames, because I know that is important to a lot of astrophotographers out there. And then at the end of the video, I will share all of the images that I've managed to capture over the last few months with this telescope. If you've got any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about this telescope. This is the 80 PHQ. It is the second telescope in Ascar's PHQ series. And by the time this video goes out, I think that they will have released either the third or maybe fourth telescope in the PHQ range. So this telescope has a 600 millimeter focal length. It has an 80 millimeter aperture and therefore has a focal ratio of f 7.5. So it isn't the fastest telescope in the world. When you compare it to telescopes such as the Ascar FRA 600 or the Skywatcher Esprit 100, both of those telescopes are faster, but this telescope is considerably cheaper. One other thing to note about this telescope is the fact that it is a Petsville design telescope. That means that it has a field flattener built into the telescope. So you don't have to go out and buy an additional field flattener that you would with some other telescopes, for example, the Esprit 100 that I just mentioned. So the field flattener is built in. All you then need to do is attach your camera to the back of the telescope, achieve focus, and you will have sharp stars all the way across your image. And I love that about the Petsfield design. Lots of the telescopes in the Ascar series, in fact, I think all of the telescopes in the Ascar series are a Petsfield design telescope. And I just think that that makes things so simple for the user. So this telescope retails for 1495 in the UK. You can also pick up an additional um, reducer, a 0.7 reducer, which is an extra 265 pounds, I believe. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the reducer later on in the video. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit of an overview of the telescope. We'll talk now about the build quality and what you get in the box. Okay, so I covered the build quality in my initial impressions video a few months ago, but I will just recap. As you would expect for a telescope that costs nearly £1,500, the build quality is absolutely fantastic. It feels like a very, very premium product. Um, the focuser is excellent. It's a very robust three inch focuser. It feels like it will hold a lot of weight and I've had no issue with my large uh, 2600 camera and filter wheel. Um, the, the way it's finished is very nice. All of the touches, the, the, the mounting rings are very nice. They have additional brackets which you can screw things into. Um, so overall, as you would expect, the, the quality and the build quality of this telescope is absolutely excellent. Okay, so what is included in the box? Well, you obviously get the telescope itself. You get a longer 300 millimeter Vixen style uh, dovetail, and that's a very nice uh, looking dovetail. And I'm glad that they've actually included a longer dovetail compared to some telescopes. So I also own the FRA 400 and that comes with a very short dovetail. So 300 mil um, allows you to balance the telescope 
much easier. You get these mounting rings which are excellent so they have different um, screws around the edge which you can attach different accessories to so if you wanted to screw counterweights into or you wanted to screw the ASI Air for example you can do that into those. You have a carry handle which I'm not actually a big fan of and I'll touch upon that later on in the video um, and you have multiple attachment rings for your camera. So you have these are very well thought out you have a M68 attachment you have an M54 and an M48 attachment so whatever camera you have should be able to attach to this this uh, telescope no problem okay so that's what you get in the box it is very well packaged um, but you would expect that from virtually any telescope so now let's have a look at the image quality that you get with this telescope Okay, so I'm going to put up some images that I've captured with this telescope over the last few months. They were all taken with this setup here. So this is the 2600 mono. I've got the Antlia 3 nanometer filters in the filter wheel here. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the HA data that I was able to capture. Now, I will zoom in and make some mosaics of the corners. And as you can see, the stars that this telescope produces are absolutely fantastic. They really are pinpoint all the way to the edge. I could not really be happier with the stars from this telescope. So right in the center, stars are absolutely sharp as you would expect, but the test of any telescope really is how they perform in the corner. And that's one of the main selling points from the PHQ series from ASCAR. They are designed to have pinpoint stars all the way to the edge. And you can see in these images, they really do produce amazing stars. Um, so overall, exceptionally happy with the, the stars um, from this telescope. I'm also really happy with the detail that I was able to pull out from this scope. I was slightly concerned with it being an f7.5 that I wasn't able to, or that I might not have been able to, to gather enough light to produce great deep sky images, but I was absolutely blown away with the image quality. The sharpness from the, the images, the detail that I was able to pull out in some of the nebulas is absolutely fantastic and I was so happy with the results I was getting. Now obviously this is paired with a very good, um, a very high quality camera, the 2600, which is um, exceptional at picking out detail as well, but it seems to be a wonderful pairing with this telescope. It does really uh, produce fantastic images and I can highly recommend this telescope if you want to shoot, shoot deep sky targets and nebulas and galaxies etc. Um, so yeah overall really really happy with the the image quality. One of the key selling points for me and one of the, the main things that I'm absolutely loving about this is the, sh the stars they produce, especially in those corners. They are incredibly tight, incredibly small and incredibly flat all the way across the field. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, there is a reducer specifically designed for this telescope. It is a 0.76 reducer for the ATPHQ. So that takes the telescope from a 600 mil focal length down to a 456 mil. It also takes it from f7.5 to f5.7. So you're able to gather a little bit more light per image. Now, I was a little bit wary about using this because I haven't had good results in the past with reducers, specifically when I was using the reducer for my William Optics Z73, but I was incredibly pleased with the results. Um, so I will show you a couple of, or one image that I managed to capture with this and the reducer on the telescope. Um, and I will zoom in to the edges of the stars. And as you can see, the stars with the reducer right at the edge are still incredibly good. They're not quite as good as at native 600 millimeters, but that is to be expected. But overall, they are very usable and very round for a telescope with a reducer. So highly recommend getting the reducer 
with this telescope, it gives you two options. It almost makes it like um, you've got two telescopes, one at 600 mil f 7.5, one at 450 mil at f 5.7. Now, one thing I would note when using this reducer, the Petsville design of this telescope no longer counts. <laughs> so you can't just attach your camera to the back and expect to get good results and mistake that I made on my first night using the reducer. So a bit of a schoolboy error for me there. Um, once you've added extra glass into the image tray, you obviously then need to think about getting the correct back focus. And for this, it's 55 millimeters. So I had to add in a spacer and I had to get the correct uh, back focus. So that's just an important thing to note if you do pick up the reducer and you do use it with this telescope. Okay, so I wanted to just go through some of the pros and cons that I found of this telescope after using it for about three months. And I'm going to start with the cons, um, mainly because there aren't that many. I haven't been able to find anything that I haven't really liked about this telescope. The one thing that I would like to change, which I mentioned earlier, is the carry handle here. So this carry handle doesn't have anywhere, it doesn't have a Vixen style attachment to attach a guide scope. So you can attach a guide scope to it, but it is a little bit fiddly. You have to find some screws to go up through the handle and it's just not overly easy to use. I know a lot of other telescopes, especially some telescopes in the Ascar series, they have a handle on top and they have a Vixen style mounting bracket, which just makes it super easy to attach things like guide scopes or the ASI Air, for example. Um, so while it's nice to have a handle on the telescope, I think that they could have utilized that as a, uh, a place to specifically mount a guide scope. Um, so that's just one thing that was a little bit um, picky of me um, that, I could, that I could suggest Ascar improve in the future. Um, the other thing that I think that would have been nice with this telescope, if it came with some form of carry case, um, they pitched this as a lighter alternative to some of the larger telescopes in the PHQ series. So if it came with a carry case that you could take this um, out and about with you if you're going to a dark sky or you're going to a star party for example that would have been a nice additional touch um, but it just comes with the box it doesn't come with anything else so overall those are the only two things I could find after three months that I didn't actually like with the telescope everything else has been extremely positive so moving on then to some of the pros Okay, so the first pro and the main thing that I love about this telescope is the stars and the image quality. Stars right to the edge, as I mentioned before, absolutely fantastic. Even with the reducer, they are very good and very usable. The images and the image quality that I've been able to produce with this telescope over the last three months has been absolutely fantastic. Very sharp, very tight, very round stars, lots of contrast. Can't complain about the image quality at all. Next thing I, um, I wanted to mention is the quality of this focuser. So this focuser is very, very well built, very sturdy three inch focuser. It feels very substantial, feels like it will support a very heavy load and works exceptionally well with the ZWO EAF, which I've been using. So it has specific mounting points on the bottom for an EAF, which is really nice, a really nice touch. I also really like the fact that this has a built-in rotator that has markers on it. Um, so that's not the case with my FRA 400 from Ascar. Um, that makes it really simple to reframe a target if you're coming back to it after a few weeks or a few months away. I also like the fact that it has a locking screw on the, um, on the dew shield. So one of my gripes with the FRA 400 is that the dew shield is quite, um, it slips down during the night there's no locking screw so they have added that in they've also provided a longer dovetail which i mentioned before so overall the build quality is absolutely fantastic these uh, mounting brackets or mounting rings are very good as well they're very well thought out and I think that that's a really nice touch. So I think that this telescope is also really well priced, especially when you consider you don't have to buy a field flattener. Um, so 
It is um, cheaper than the FRA 600, for example, cheaper than the Esprit 100, um, and you don't have to go out and buy an additional field flattener that's already uh, built in. So yeah, very reasonably priced um, for what you get for such a quality telescope. So yeah, I think that that is also one of the pros of this telescope. Um, so those are just some of my thoughts after using it for, for about three months or so. Um, I'm going to put up now on screen all of the images they were able to capture with this telescope. So I think I've captured four, maybe five images. Um, please do let me know your thoughts in the comments below, which image do you prefer? Um, and if you've got any questions about this telescope, please let me know in the comments. I will do my best to answer that and get back to you as soon as I can. But thank you guys so much for watching. I do really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Um, and if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I will see you in the next video where I should have some very exciting news about astrophotography in my garden. So thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next video.